Hey, everybody. You are about to hear a brief retelling of the movie The Little Hours. Enjoy the movie. At an Italian convent in 1347, Sister Ginevra observes that Sister Fernanda has skipped morning prayer. Later, she witnesses Sister Fernanda enter with the donkey. Ginevra thinks it strange that Fernanda claims she had to go after the escaping donkey because the donkey isn't supposed to be able to unlock gates. Ginevra also finds it odd that Fernanda is dressed in black for spring. The sisters rage at Handyman Lurko and label him a creep for establishing eye contact with them when he wishes them good morning since they have to maintain their purity. Subsequently, Mother Maria queries Fernanda about her disappearance and becomes dubious of the donkey narrative, given that it frequently disappears while in Fernanda's care. Maria then works with Ginevra to arrange the bookshelves. Ginevra tells her all the rumors about other nuns misbehaving, such as consuming two portions of food, but she becomes sidetracked when she notices a pornographic painting on a book. Sister Alessandra is having a terrible existence in the interim. Although her father had her attend, she doesn't want to since she must help the church. She hopes to meet her lover again someday and passes her time praying and stitching. There isn't much interaction with the outside world, and she seldom gets to see her father when he comes to visit, he's hidden behind a metal shade. Lurko witnesses the three sisters walking down the road in the afternoon. Ginevra throws turnips at him after Fernanda yells at him once again for staring. Alessandra is first stunned, but as a coping mechanism for her inner annoyances, she soon begins to hurl abuses and smash Lurko's belongings. As the three girls vent their anger on him by calling him a Jew and spitting on him, poor Lurko can only remain on the ground. A little later, Lurko approaches Father Tommaso as he is leaving the convent to sell the needlework in town and tells him he has had enough of being harassed and has decided to resign. Not far from there, Lord Bruno finds out that his wife is having an affair with Macedo, the servant. Bruno walks into the room and Macedo bolts through the window, returning to the servant's quarters to make himself appear to be asleep. Not wanting to cause a commotion in front of the others, Bruno chooses to chop off a portion of Macedo's hair in order to identify him in the morning. Following Bruno's departure, Macedo cuts a lock of hair from each servant in the room using the same knife. The next morning, nobody knows what went wrong, and Bruno is left with little choice but to advise everyone to have their hair trimmed properly. Later on, Macedo receives an approach from Bruno's wife, who wants to carry on their affair. She makes Macedo kiss her even if he attempts to ignore her. Bruno notices this and orders the guards to execute Macedo. The servant, terrified, flees right away and enters the jungle, where he escapes the guards. He discovers Tommaso beside the river, where, instead of selling the embroidery, he has become inebriated and unintentionally dumped all the textiles into the water. After Macedo helps him acquire a few items and puts the cart back together, Tommaso extends an invitation to stay the night as a token of gratitude. They spend the evening together, sharing food and beverages, at Tommaso's hut. Macedo takes advantage of the opportunity to confess his transgressions, and Tommaso is horrified to learn of other dirty deeds he was unaware of. Tommaso gets an idea when Macedo claims he wants to start again as a nice guy and that he is being pursued. Macedo is posing as a deaf mute when Tommaso brings him to the monastery the next day and presents him as the new handyman. Tommaso tells a false story about being robbed when Maria inquires about the textiles. As soon as Macedo begins working, Ginevra and Fernanda become rather interested in him after noticing his presence. Later on, Fernanda keeps getting in the way of Alessandra's attempts to teach a new novice about the convent's routine as she poses as the sweeper. Arriving to work on the wall, Macedo smiles at them as Alessandra demands an explanation. Thinking he's an intruder, Fernanda freaks out right away and threatens him with an axe. Maria, who Alessandra fortunately comes, clarifies everything before it gets out of hand. Following that, Fernanda enjoys yelling at Macedo, who is said to be deaf, while Maria informs Alessandra that the needlework was taken and that extra work would be done to make up for it. The fact that Alessandra now works with a reserved older sister only serves to worsen the problem. Alessandra sends her broken embroidery frame to Macedo for repair after breaking it by accident out of irritation. From a distance, Fernanda and Ginevra observe Alessandra, suspecting something fishy is going on between her and a man. Alessandra takes use of the moment to vent to Macedo about her predicament while he is fixing the frame. Macedo finds this bothersome, but he needs to pretend he doesn't hear her. Confession time is later in the afternoon. Feeling uneasy, Ginevra confides in Father Tommaso that she ate a turnip from the garden without sharing and that she has been thinking about. When Fernanda's turn comes, she attempts to mimic Ginevra's admission, so Tommaso has to chastise her for watching them and using the same ridiculous justification to skip prayers. But Fernanda is adamant that she has committed no more faults. Fernanda assists her companion Marta in breaking into the monastery that evening. After stealing the bulk wine and bringing it to Alessandra's room, they coerce her into joining them in alcohol consumption. Ginevra walks over to protest because they are getting too loud, but they simply drag her in and force her to drink with them since they are having so much fun. When Marta finally gets Alessandra and Ginevra to acknowledge that they have never dated a man, she tells them some amazing things about it, including how to use the belladonna plant to enhance your appearance. 
Fernanda and Marta begin kissing and attempt to include Ginevra when Alessandra nods out. After Ginevra objects, Fernanda shows her to her room, where they ultimately spend the night together. The following day, Alessandra gives Macedo an embroidered handkerchief to wipe away his perspiration. In addition, she assists him with the gardening, which makes her feel warm and causes her to remove her veil. As things grow tight, they break into a kiss, which makes Macedo shove Alessandra to the ground so she can do the dirty work. When the bell begins to ring, Alessandra pushes Macedo and bolts from the scene out of fear. Alessandra has dirt beneath her nails, which Fernanda discovers later on during the prayers. Later, while doing the laundry, Ginevra tries to talk to Fernanda about what they did the night before, but she is silenced. Afterwards, Alessandra stops by to clean her veil, which raises suspicions among the others as she never cleans anything. She explains that she got it filthy with Macedo, but after seeing how much labor washing involves, she chooses to let Ginevra handle the veil. Envious Fernanda departs as well, promising to clean the cellar when Alessandra has left. When Ginevra goes to check the cellar after doing the laundry by herself, Fernanda isn't there. Fernanda encounters Marta in the interim, and she uses Belladonna to create a concoction that makes Fernanda's eyes dilate. They also use a small amount of blood to give her cheekbones some color. Ginevra observes the most of the action from behind the plants. Then, using a knife, Marta and Fernanda track down Macedo and force him to do the dirty on both of them at once. Ginevra discovers the Belladonna pot while they are having fun and goes seeking for them, but they have already finished and are acting innocent. When Ginevra asks Fernanda if their evening together meant anything, she replies that it was only fun and begs her to go on. Later on in the evening, Macedo informs Tommaso that he intends to stay for a long time since he is genuinely enjoying his visit. Maria abruptly interrupts them, so Macedo runs for cover as Tommaso takes her for a stroll. The next day, Macedo slips through a window to sneak into Alessandra's chamber and complete the dirty work as Maria and Tommaso welcome the bishop for an inspection. The elderly assistant sister enters during this time and doesn't even see them, but Tommaso can't help but swear at her. When Alessandra hears him talking, she is outraged, but before she can confront him about it, they hear approaching people. While Alessandra rushes to work and does her best to mend her clothing, Tommaso hides beneath the bed. After the bishop and Maria leave and see everything is in order, Tommaso flees via the window. Subsequently, the bishop examines the accounting records and observes an unusual pattern in the cloth sales, which is attributed to Maria and Tommaso fabricating figures to conceal the theft. Ginevra abruptly interrupts them to share something about Fernanda. Maria carries Ginevra away right away so they may converse alone, but she doesn't really believe the stuff Ginevra tells about donkeys and beer. When Ginevra discovers a sleeping Macedo following a demanding workday, temptation eventually gets the better of her. She hides in the cellar to prepare some belladonna potion, but because she couldn't see the ritual well, she drinks it rather than placing it in her eyes. She then applies excessive amounts of blood to her cheeks and removes her veil, giving off a crazy appearance. While Macedo appears to be asleep, Alessandra approaches him about his speech, but they hear someone approaching, so Alessandra runs for cover. Ginevra enters at that moment and gives Macedo a kiss, but she soon withdraws since it feels so odd. Ginevra acknowledges the truth, that she is Jewish and that she genuinely liked women, thanks to the Belladonna's effects. She then thinks it must be angels when she hears someone humming outside and runs to hide in the same area as Alessandra. Subsequently, Fernanda enters the room dressed in black, and she ties Macedo's hands and blindfolds him before removing him. Alessandra and Ginevra get suspicious and begin to follow them, observing that Fernanda is taking the donkey so she may use the standard justification later. After spending several hours traversing the woodland, they eventually learn the reason for Fernanda's misadventures at dusk. She is a witch who comes to the forest to meet with Marta and other witches. Macedo is getting ready for a fertility ceremony as they dance around the fire practically naked. Ginevra, enthralled by what she sees, quickly strips off and joins in the dancing, while Fernanda sits on Macedo, poised to offer him as a sacrifice. When Macedo chooses to speak and begs for forgiveness, Marta gags him and prepares the knife, leading Fernanda to believe they have healed him. The witches eventually see Ginevra at that point, when the dancing stops, and she begins to worry and make a disturbance since she is still under the Belladonna's influence. Ginevra assaults Marta when she attempts to stop her, forcing them to tumble to the ground and engage in combat. After some resistance, Ginevra succeeds in knocking Marta unconscious, and Alessandra seizes the opportunity to halt Fernanda and release Macedo. The sisters then demand an explanation for his falsehoods, but Ginevra's escape with the donkey cuts them off. Ginevra returns to the convent a little while later, and she immediately begins knocking on doors and screaming for people to wake up. She is discovered first by the bishop, who attempts to calm her down as she begins to describe all she witnessed. The rest of the gang shows up at that point and begins berating her as well, sparking a heated dispute that doesn't end until the bishop finds out Ginevra is Jewish. The bishop, bewildered and exasperated, heads to locate Maria, who emerges from her chamber wearing a man's trousers on her head. Everyone is stunned when Macedo speaks out of nowhere, so Tommaso exits Maria's chamber to declare that a miracle has occurred. 
The bishop enumerates all of Geneva's transgressions the following morning and determines that a year-long fast will serve as penance. But he knows it will make her starve to death, so instead they decide she will forego lunch every day for a year. Alessandra then begs for forgiveness when he condemns her and says her father would be displeased. When Fernanda's turn comes, she rolls her eyes at the bishop's reprimands with obvious indifference. Finally, he passes judgment on Maria, who continues to exchange glances with Tommaso as the bishop talks. Ultimately, the bishop makes the decision to remove Tommaso's priesthood and exile him to a monastery. When Tommaso attempts to bid Maria a heartfelt farewell, the bishop throws him out. A very old guy is picked to stay out of trouble when a new priest soon arrives at the convent. His hands tremble throughout communion, which only serves to aggravate him. In addition, the bishop ensures sure Ginevra is baptized at last. Afterwards, the sisters express regret to one another and ponder Macedo's future. In the meanwhile, Bruno, who divorced and remarried his unfaithful wife, has returned Macedo to him. Macedo is kept in a cell by Bruno, who explains that rather than killing him, he will prolong his suffering. When Bruno leaves, Macedo attempts to talk the guards into releasing him, but they only make fun of him. Abruptly, a shadowy figure places a candle-adorned turtle next to the entrance. The sisters enter to rescue Macedo, leaving a doll in the cell as payment, and the guards become enthralled with it to the point that they begin to follow it. In order for him to get dressed up and hide with them in the monastery, they also give him a knife and his own habit. The fact that the prisoner is a doll escapes the attention of the returning guards. Then, while the party is sprinting over the jungle, they come across the donkey of the nuns on the bridge. It seems that Maria is secretly seeing Tommaso and exchanging kisses beneath the moon to take advantage of Fernanda's ill-fated scheme.